Stop just monitoring your machines and start monitoring your production. Because here at Machine Metrics, they are passionate and firm believers of manufacturing and production intelligence. You ever had any issues connecting your ERP with your machine fleet? Yes, yeah, so has everybody else. But today we're revealing to all of you a revolutionary, never been seen or done before technology. And who better than the team at Machine Metrics? We're gonna hand things off to my man, Arthur, to jump right in. Awesome, thank you, Eddie. I'm here with my buddy, Rutherford. Rutherford, we have a beautiful display up here on the screen. Can you tell me what's going on here? What am I looking at? Oh, this is an amazing production schedule that uses real-time information to tell you when jobs are gonna get done. Ho hold on, I don't have to use pen and paper or Excel sheets? No, not at all. I mean, we have so many customers who use a schedule that they built in their ERP with standards that may be out of date, and they can never understand exactly when things are gonna get done. And so we, we decided to give them a better tool because they've been using whiteboard, and Excel to kind of make things happen. So we digitized the entire thing. I love it. I had an ERP system when I was still on the shop floor and I'll tell you what, I put stuff in and I use an Excel spreadsheet and a bunch of pen and paper because I hated it. Oh, so I yes. can't wait to learn more about what you got here. So take me through this. How does this revolutionize it? What, what difference does it make for the machine shops out there? All right, well, the first thing is we have an estimated time to complete. It's okay. an ML-based engine that looks at lots of different data, mostly the active cycle time that's on the machine to calculate when that job's gonna be done. We predict the availability or the utilization of the machine and a number of other different data signals to yep. identify when that job is gonna be done. But we also predict when the next job in queue is going to start and when it's going to be done and then the next job after that and the next job for every machine in your shop floor okay so if I'm getting it right then you got CNC Swiss one and we kind of go down the board so that's each of the different machining centers and then as we move right that looks like it's the next jobs that's the next jobs that are up hey, to go you've done a good job on the UI this is the first time I'm looking at it and I actually understand what there I'm looking go. at hey that says a lot so what what do the different colors mean I noticed there's a few different colors up there yeah absolutely so if it's gray that means it's on time but if it's orange that means it's at risk of being late so if you want to focus on on-time delivery, you want to get rid of all your orange and make it as clear as possible. I love the color code. That makes it really simple, way better than my pen and paper and my Excel spreadsheets and the ERP I never used. So what about the red and the exclamation marks and the little caution symbols? What's that all about? So for example, let's look at this one on CNC Swiss One. I get a little stop sign here. Even though this one's not going to be late, that means it's not ready to run, but it's the next up. So what I want to do is if I see this there and I don't, I don't, this job is not ready to run, I'm going to go over here to my schedule work. I'm going to click this button right here, and this gives me this to a job to do something about it. So I can take this job, since it is ready to run, and move it right in front of it. I can also schedule work through drag and drop, and the schedule recalculates using real-time information every time a cycle changes and every time you make a change like this into the event. Okay, but I also noticed that one stayed orange. Is orange a good color for this? It's still not a good color, so it's still gonna be done late. So is there a way we can drill into that a little bit? Yeah, so if I can, if I, if I can run this on another machine yeah. where I can get it to be clear, I can drag and drop to another machine. Now, Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So these are the ways that you can make and control your schedule. And I've never seen an ERP schedule survive the, sh the reality of the shop floor. And no. so this is something the shop floor manager can use to make those changes dynamically. And that information is immediately communicated to the rest of the shop. Well, I love how clear this is. And I'm going to throw it over back to my buddy, Ta Tony. Thank you so much, Rutherford. Thank you. ERP, e I don't need no stinking ERP. We're about to change your mind, Josh. What do we got? Yeah, so we make ERP connectors as well. So uh, in order to get all that information that we're get, that we're pushing into the production schedule, you need a connection to your ERP. So we've built uh, a bunch of uh, ERP connections, Epicor Kinetic, Infor Visual, Jobboss Squared, uh, Microsoft D365, that we make it stupid simple to actually connect to an ERP which no other company are doing right now. That's fantastic, because sometimes I can be stupid simple. So I own a machine shop. I'm still not sold yet. Why is this so amazing? Yeah, so uh, no other company is doing this. We are putting these integrations directly on the Edge device. So they're living right at home on the on-premise uh, at, the, at the company, and they connect directly to your ERP. Uh, all you have to do is just enter your, cred your credentials, test your connection, we sync directly to the ERP, we map your data into machine metrics, and now we have work order information directly connected to your, your real-time machine data. Yeah. That seems absolutely incredible. Why hasn't anybody done this before? Because it's a hard problem to solve, and uh, we really wanted to solve a really hard problem. Yeah, well, that makes sense to me. All right, let's head over to Graham and Arthur. Take it away. Awesome, thank you, Tony. Now, Graham, I'm looking at a screen, and look, I've used ERP systems in the past. I hated them. How is this any different? How are you making it different? All right, well, first of all, right, 
ERP systems that rife with manual data collection, time-consuming analytics, and reality is we know that they're only as good as the data that goes into them, right? <laughs> so here's the thing, right? Old school job tracking used to have to have operators walk all the way over to some terminal, enter yep. part counts that they believe that they made, right? And then essentially push that data back into the ERP and that leaves the system rife with estimations. Yeah. And that's a problem, right? We knew that there was a better way to do that. So let me show you exactly how that works. Might wanna put that down just a little bit. All right, so. Essentially, now operators can quickly and easily log in to their uh, to their uh, you know to their station with just a couple clicks. As you see here, my name is Alex. It's actually Graham. That's all good. All right. Now I'm logging in and my station. Boom. All right. Now we know you can also use an RFID swipe. Boom. All right. We're in. Now when a machine starts running, okay, you load the program program out of the machine. Right. The machine starts running. Right. We know that the machine is in a setup because it hasn't made straight cycles, right? Mm -hmm. Once the machine makes three straight cycles, we know it's in production. We backdate all that time previously as setup, call that automated setup detection, all right? Now the machine starts running, right? We know which operation is running on the machine because we're connected to the CNC, right? So essentially the machine starts running, it starts making parts, right? We track the status of that production in real time. Now, when the machine program finishes, right? Or when uh, the, the programmer or the operator stops the machine, they are provided with a labor ticket, right? And that labor ticket is automatically propagated by real time data from the machine. No need for manual data entry. And what makes that even cooler is if you have an in process probe, right? You can automatically reject parts uh, from that from that production run or that work order. All you got to do is operator looks at it. He says, Oh, yep, that's what I did submits that ticket back into the ERP and immediately is is uh, is uh, presented uh, the next operation in the schedule that they can get started on the next work. And that's how it works. Well, that is absolutely fantastic, Graham. And that is so much easier than the standard ERP solution that I'm used to seeing. I used to be the guy where I'd have to sit down in a boardroom <laughs> once a week, once a month. I'd have to go over everyone's clock. Nope, you're wrong. No wrong. I know you did not make 10,000 parts yesterday. You probably made 10. But those fat fingers, when you do the data, manual data entry, so the fact that you guys have actually automated this and made it a flawless situation that requires minimal input, maybe a couple quick verifications and away you go. I can't wait to learn more. And listen, the machine data doesn't lie, right? It tells a story no. of what's going on, right? But the problem is that story ends at the machine, right? We knew that that data needed to go back into your operational systems to make the rest of that more intelligent, right? And that's what production intelligence is all about, right? It doesn't stop at the machine. It's all about using that information, that real-time accurate information to make all of the rest of our business smarter. I love the smarter angle and I also love the fact that there's going to be way less manual data entered. That means everyone in the shop is contributing value where they are experts in because we're not all expert data analysts. <laughs> that's right. I mean, you don't have to be a data scientist to use this. You don't have to be a custom coder, system integrator, developer. This is easy enough so somebody like me can use it and trust me. I'm not an engineer, so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Graham. We're going to kick it back over to Tony. All right. Did Graham just say I'm not an engineer? Because he sure sounds like one, but we're going to get into production analytics. Let's, let's dive into one of my favorite subjects, which is just getting to know things a little deeper and a little better, right? Absolutely. So production analytics uh, allows you to use this data in your morning rituals, your weekly rituals, where you can identify where you have work that's uh, falling behind, it's not meeting your standards, it's uh, running slower than, uh, than it has in the past. That happens to me every Monday and Friday when I'm in my machine shops. I'm running a little slower than I'm supposed to be, but I think you have some answers to that, don't you? Yeah, well, you can definitely tell when you've had a, a cup of espresso when you look at the state of <laughs> here. So uh, let me let me dive in here. So basically, when, you, when you're running your uh, your jobs, because we have the ERP connector, uh, we can quickly identify when you have um, uh, when you have completed work, when you have in-progress work, and then drill in here. And if you want to look at just, say, last week, we can identify where the biggest outliers are. So right here, we have a uh, cycle time that's slower than expected. This is coming from ERP. Uh, we can see that we're running here seven minutes slower than um, than the uh, the standard that's out of the ERP. But we're also tracking against baseline. So we go back up to 20 runs, 20 previous work orders, and we look at the worst offenders that are running slower than what you have in the past. And that's this list right here. So 
If we drill in, we can really see the details and understand why um, these issues are happening. So, One of my favorite things to do is drill in because I always like to learn more. In doing this, is there anything you guys can't do? I mean, I've been in a machine shop. I've run machine shops. I've run four acre facilities before and everything seemed to be tribal knowledge, but you guys are diving in so well that I wouldn't have any more guesswork, would I? No, I mean, the, the thing is that we really understand the context of the data between the ERP connection, between the machine connection. Um, there's no input required from the operator. And, uh, and we're able to really get to the answers fast. So let's actually dive into all the analytics we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, let's find out why this particular work order is, fall, is uh, behind standard so much. So by drilling in, you can actually see exactly what happened uh, in that work order from the beginning to the end, whether it's in setup, production, running or not. And then we, we track your OE performance compared to your baseline. And you can see, you know, this one is coming up. It's, uh, it's running about uh, half of what your, your normal baseline would be. And then by looking at your cycle times, you can see why this is standing out. Where our standard is 45 minutes, we're actually running at 52 minutes. So, uh, but the other thing we can do is by going to our cycles report, if you look at touch time, that big red pie there is because that touch time is varying all over the place. There's a big opportunity to improve. And then finally, if you go into the history, this is where you can see performance over time. Look at this, your, uh, your cycle time running over the past year and a half is getting slower and slower. We've got a problem. You, know, you can see that right in the trend here. And this data helps you dive right in so you can even understand, for example, where that downtime is coming from so to improve your OEE. So right here, we understand your gap time shift to shift. It's causing 800 hours of downtime for that for that entire uh, the entire run of that particular part sequence. Absolutely insane when you think about how much time is, is being wasted, right? Absolutely, and you know what? This data is pulled automatically, so you don't have to be sitting there like going drilling into the data, looking at paper. It's all there right on your fingertips and it's, uh, it's right here in production analytics. Well, I have to ask you before we bring Eddie back on camera to close this out, have I asked you all the questions you need to be asked today, my <laughs> friend? I know we, there's so much to learn with machine metrics. Yeah, there really is. I mean, there's even like, all the reporting is very configurable. You can design it the way you want. It could be replace your Gemba, uh, Gemba meetings with a, with a digital Gemba board. Uh, it's really a powerful system that uh, yeah, we're really excited to unveil here at IMTS. You make me want to go back to the machine shop and get back into this kind of stuff again. I appreciate you guys. Now, when you get into machine monitoring, when you get into machine metrics, as they say right here, smart manufacturers use production intelligence. We're going to bring Eddie back on for a closing statement just to say how profound this is and how it can help your shops. If you're having data problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but production ain't one. Hey, if you're having those connectivity problems, we're solving all of them with this revolutionary, never before seen technology. Make sure you check it out here at Machine Metrics. Everyone, this is Eddie with MTD CNC. We'll see you next time.